everyone, so this is the next tutorial. Um, in this one, it's just going to be a uh, sort of a, a quick one that where I talk about certain systems. Now, to make it brief, um, the as you can see, I have this little uh, kind of flow chart or box chart. These uh, purplish ones, these three boxes, are not really um, as important as the other. Uh, bluish boxes. These ones, so hardware, drivers, and operating system are things to think about when you're developing your engine, but generally, um, since ours is only really PC oriented, um, hardware we can just assume PC, so there's nothing we have to worry about such as embedded systems and um, memory issues and things like that. Um, drivers we don't have to worry about in the operating system you can keep in mind but our targets would generally be Windows, Mac, and Linux if you um, were really thinking that way. So really um, of course that should say party but you know um, third, third party SDKs generally uh, what they mean by that is anything that you did not write that's a compiled library that you're linking to either shared or um, uh, static. So um, DirectX, OpenGL, FMOD for sound. Um, uh, free image. Uh, there's a whole host of them. Glue, etc. Um, so that's where those live. Now the platform independence layer this is a very important part of a game engine. Generally, um, if you're writing a multi-platform engine that runs on both PC and consoles, you need to have some sort of layer that wraps your code in or wraps the functions into a independent system so that there's one function call or really one um, unified API that can target every single system and you can just, you know, it pre-process out the the code that you are building to based on platform. So for us, um, we already kind of did a little bit of that with our pre-processor macros and the platform header that we wrote. Um, those are defined at compile time when we build our library. So let's say you, you're targeting Windows, Mac, Linux, Xbox, and PS4. Xbox One and PS4, you'd have probably have a DLL built for each of those platforms for Windows, for Linux, for Mac, for Xbox, and for PS4. And within all all those different um, DLLs are only the code that can actually run on those platforms. The other code is pre-processed out, so it's not actually compiled into the into the DLL. Um, and as we go through writing the engine, I'll explain more about what linking is, what um, sort of the exporting of, of classes is and what that means for a lot of different um, types um, such as you know variable scope etc. So the next layer in a game engine is the core systems. Now the core systems usually entail um, the math libraries that you have, the, um, the runtime type information, the streams, file system stuff, debug information systems, um, profiling, so being able to profile snippets of code um, to find the sort of performance um, or where your engine is not performing very well. Um, memory diagnostics, so figuring out, especially this is especially uh, important for consoles because with, with PCs, PCs have a virtual memory um, location, you know, they have a lot of virtual memory, basically. The operating system um, can deal with memory fragmentation and dynamic memory allocation, so if you have, like, memory leaking or a lot of bad, non-performant code, the your um, game on, on, on PCs will not really, uh, you won't crash, so your game won't run out of memory, it'll just maybe perform a little bit a little bit bad the frames per second may drop but on a console on an embedded system if you run out of memory that's usually it 
that that means that the game is gonna like crash. Um, so yeah, generally it's a bad idea to develop a, a game engine that's going to run on PC and um, embedded systems with a a lot of dynamic memory allocation and yeah, it a lot it causes a lot of overhead. So that's really the core systems, is a lot of the lower level stuff. Now, these top two cubes are the really the bread and butter of a, of a game engine. They really are the game engine. Um, or at least what a lot of people uh, see when they see Unreal Engine 4, Unity, Cry, Cry Engine, etc. There's the runtime engine, which is the actual, all the code that we're, write, we're going to write is sort of what's named the runtime engine. So, um, all the 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 render system, the resource management system, anything that um, is really used in the um, and executed during runtime of your application is located in the runtime engine. The tools and world builder is the um, application suite that we would develop that would exist beside our runtime engine so our, it would technically use the runtime engine and allow us to describe our levels, our, describe our content um, so you know our game objects generally uh, export that into some sort of file type that's usable by our runtime engine so that's where the resource system comes in generally game, game engines Take take data um, from a from a world builder, compile it into a, a format, generally a binary format, um, and are able to then load it back in very quickly, um, asynchronously, so that the game can can then be pretty much built from just files, local files. That way you don't a lot of the stuff isn't really hard coded so um, most of the game doesn't have to be built every time you you know change something like very little um, yeah so that's where you know scripting systems come in also or all sorts of uh, higher level runtime engine stuff exists there um, so as you can see, there's there's a lot to this. There's animation systems. There's um, there's render processing libraries where you take um, exported graphics from uh, programs like Maya, um, content creation programs like Adobe Flash, Maya, uh, Blender. Blender's a popular one. That's the free one that many of you have probably used. Um, they uh, they then take that data and actually process it so it's more performant for their engine. So they'll reorder vertices in a mesh, for instance. They'll do all types of, of optimizations so that their their games will run that much faster. Um, so yeah, if if I haven't scared you yet, um, you probably are scared now. Uh, that's what it takes really to write a game engine. Now, of course, we're not going to be doing anything like that. This is just sort of a test project that I thought up for myself to sort of challenge myself. Um, and I thought might as well share the experience with everyone else. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to write a very simple um, game engine that can hopefully, maybe not the best, but it can do at least these things minimally. So some sort of world builder or content creator that will interface with the runtime engine. We'll build the core systems, so our debugging systems, etc. Maybe some minimal profiling systems. Build the runtime engine, of course. Um, the rendering systems, etc. to do 2D, you know, potentially, you know, some 3D stuff as well. Definitely some UI. Um, and we'll see how that goes. So, uh, so uh, thanks for watching. And um, a new tutorial in the actual coding um, will be following this real soon.
Thanks for watching.